Hey everyone, this is Ivan. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can verify your model after taking impressions for a fixed complete denture. It's really important that your model be 100% accurate because if it's not, you're going to have to end up cutting your framework or ordering a new framework, and they cost about $1,000 each. So you definitely want to make sure that it's accurate from the beginning. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can verify your model using a verification jig, and I'm going to show you what steps you can take to make your model accurate just in case it doesn't verify. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Otherwise, here's how you do it. So first you want to pour up your impression using low expansion dye stone. For implant impressions, it's common practice to use a silicone material to replicate the soft tissue. But for this step, we're going to take the soft tissue off the model and place non-engaging temporary abutments at each site. Now it's important for you to use non-engaging abutments for this step because you're testing for passive fit. As you can see, a non-engaging abutment doesn't have any angles that bind at the abutment interface. Then you're going to connect all of them together with a piece of floss just like you did during the implant impression. And then build a little bridge with GC pattern looting all of the temporary abutments together. Then you're going to take a disc and cut the GC pattern in between each implant. I would recommend that you go ahead and number each little segment of GC pattern because once you're transferring this to the mouth, it gets a little confusing and you could mix them up on accident. Now you're going to transfer this to the patient's mouth. You're going to put each individual segment on its corresponding implant and then take an x-ray to make sure it's all the way down. Once you're sure they're fully seated, you're going to connect all the segments together with GC pattern resin. Once the GC pattern is fully set, Go ahead and unscrew each individual temporary abutment and remove the jig as one piece. If on your model you can see that your verification jig sits perfectly on each implant and that there's no gap anywhere, then you have a verified cast and you're ready to go on to the next step. But if your model looks like this and there's a little gap in between the abutment and the implant, then you have a problem. So if your model looks like this, you can either retake a new final impression or you can edit your cast. Now I'm going to show you the steps to editing your cast. So first identify the implant that looks like it's not seating properly. You're going to take a thin burr and trough out that implant from your model. Then attach that implant replica to your verification jig and tighten the screw. When you try to seat your verification jig back on the model, there's probably going to be some stone debris that doesn't let you seat it all the way. So go ahead and clear that out with a burr. Make sure your verification jig can seat fully on the model. Mix up some stone or GC pattern resin and pour it into that defect that you have now on your model. Now quickly go ahead and seat your verification jig and tighten each individual screw. Try to wipe off some of the excess material that's going to overflow from that defect site. Once your material sets up, you're done. This is your edited, now accurate model. The downside to editing your cast is that now your soft tissue probably won't fit very well on your model. So you're going to have to take an extra step uh, at a later appointment and you're going to have to do a, a wash to recapture that soft tissue. But in any case, now you have your verified model and you're ready to go on to occlusal records. All right, so that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope that helped. Feel free to reach out to me with any questions you might have and stay tuned for more videos.